movies are a medium in which you can get away with murder. You can, you can show um, anything you like, and um, and it's safe and harmless, and nobody gets hurt. And yet it can certainly shock or thrill a few people, which is also a bit of fun. In 1983, Peter buys a second-hand camera capable of professional results. The old 8 mil is returned to mum and dad, and work is begun at once on a 10-minute film which four years later will become the feature Bad Taste. 90% of Bad Taste was shot on a Bolex. They're very, very basic. You put the film in this side, and then it's like a spring loaded motor, you've got to wind it up and it gives you about 30 seconds worth of shooting. They're nice and light and you can do a lot of camera moves with them. I mean, you know, and it looks fine on the screen too. He had the camera and his friends to assist him. But camera gear had to be made by hand. Tracks, a dolly, and although requiring some effort in getting to locations, particularly cliff tops, a camera crane. So sort of the whole thing was knocked together out of uh, aluminium and put together a bit like a giant Meccano set. And um, the camera, this little lightweight Bodex again, was just mounted onto this bit on the end here. And of course, um, because of all this bloody metal, I couldn't look through the lens at all. And um, all the crane shots were done by pointing the camera in the general direction of the actors and just hoping for the best. But if you use a wide-angle lens, you usually get away with that sort of thing. But sometimes, the camera must stay with the action. This is another bit of gear that I built for um, the film. It's called a Steadicam. And um, normally, if you buy a proper one, they're about 40 or 50 grand, but this one costs uh, about 20 bucks. And it sort of works basically the same principle, where you can move the camera around, follow people while they're running, and get more or less steady shots, because it's a spring-loaded thing move around like this to so come up and down in and out and we use it for um, quite a few little shots in bad taste and it seemed to help a little bit the next big challenge was to come up with ideas for workable and cheap special effects to be used in the on-screen action Well, the idea with most special effects, I reckon, is to keep them as simple as possible. And if you've got to have a machete going to somebody's head, it's easier to have a real person's head in a fake machete. So you knock something together like this with um, a bit of cardboard and some ice cream sticks to keep the whole thing reasonably rigid. And there's a pipe for blood, the little holes here that comes out. It just fits nice and snugly like that. <coughs> Peter Jackson's ability to create realism at next to nothing cost also went into building an arsenal of weapons. Went a bit over the top because I did mechanisms that could work and all this sort of carry on. Um, the magazines are just made of wood and a bit of cardboard on top. And um, I just got a whole lot of aluminium tubing like this bit here and uh, drilled holes in it. and. It's really held together by glue. It's not particularly strong. If you drop, dropped it on the concrete, it would probably shatter. And this is just a bit of FIMO, which is like plasticine for the handle. And uh, we just had to have the guy shaking these guns and make it look as if they're... To an industry used to multi-million dollar budgets, these achievements might well be sickening. And the film went on to create its own on-screen. This is the, the chief baddie in the film. He's made out of foam latex. The latex moulds were laid over fibreglass with wires to control the lips and give the appearance of speech. You three, kill them. The rest of you get the... The major location for the film was set inside and outside an old colonial homestead. And the team changed hats 
from actors and film crew to chippies and proceeded to build an exact replica five meters high. The corner to be demolished was designed to be broken away for a number of takes and reassembled to appear whole. Then came the first experiments with explosives. Three, two, one, fire. Oh, oh hell! Oh, hell! Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Yep. <laughs> the missile was tested on a line. Two, one. The rocket was all right, the blast didn't do a great deal. <laughs> Three, two, one, fire. In the finished film, the rocket did indeed travel on a fishing line. But the house also had to fly. Another model was built, this time a meter square, and mounted on the camera crane instead of the camera, which remained fixed. The house was fitted with lights and smoke machines, and a country road was also built in model form for the foreground. But things took a while to get right. Sometimes there was too much smoke, and the wind was wrong. Five meters, one meter, and now an even smaller model for the final scenes in space. It was actually made out of old um, film boxes that I used to get from the National Film Unit, cardboard boxes. And we had a light shining inside here which provided the interior illumination. And this was sitting on a gramophone turntable and we slowly spun it around. It's really lightweight. Bad Taste is Peter Jackson's 12th film. What began as a 10-minute short finished as a 90-minute feature. After four years of dedicated work and some professional help in putting the film together, Peter was convinced it could go commercial. It was to be screened publicly for the first time at the 1988 Cannes Film Festival. The film has won international acclaim for its humor and originality, for an extraordinary individual talent, which began in childhood. Being an only child does make you uh, more imaginative, I think, because you have to create um, your own games by yourself with whatever props come to hand. I mean, you know, matchbox toys and building blocks and that sort of carry on. You haven't got any anybody else to bounce off, so you you're creating it all in your own head all the time and it, I think it certainly helps sort of um, exercise the mind if you like it's trained your mind to um, to think of things to be imaginative Bad Taste was made with great enthusiasm but very little money the world holds its breath for Peter Jackson's second feature and first fully professional film. <laughs>